Uh, would you all take a seat? Mr. Grace will be down any minute. What's all this about, Mr. Harmon? Oh, well, you've asked the right person. It so happens that I know precisely what's going on. Do you mean to tell me that Mr. Grace has taken you into his confidence? No, he hasn't. I just had a quick look in this folder here, and I know all the details we're going to discuss. <laughs> Unfortunately, my lips is sealed. <laughs> But it's all in that folder. <laughs> I wonder if we're all going to get a rise. Or a cut. Perhaps it's a takeover by the Army and Navy. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> Perhaps some Arab sheik has bought us all. Oh, Mrs Slocum will come into her own then, won't she? <laughs> they like them big in the East. <laughs> come to think of it, she's very big in the South as well. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, just because we're in the boardroom and on our best behaviour doesn't mean that I won't give you one up the bracket. <laughs> Mr. Granger, can't you control your junior? I'm more interested in what is in that damn folder. Well, you're nearest. Have a look. I wouldn't demean myself. You're next nearest. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll keep cave for you. Why me? Oh, there you are, you see. <laughs> when it comes to action, it's all talk. I shouldn't count on it. He didn't say much when he got me in the broom cupboard at Christmas party. <laughs> all clear. Mr Lucas, as the senior staff member here, I must forbid you to look into that phone. All right, then. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Captain Peacock. I only read the first line. <laughs> well... What's it all about, then? Well, Captain Peacock's name was mentioned, but as I'm not supposed to have seen it, my lips are sealed. <laughs> <laughs> all I will say is that if I've ever been rude to you in the past, Captain Peacock, I'm very sorry. <laughs> That's all right, Mr Lucas. My promotion was not entirely unexpected. I didn't see the word promotion. What word did you see? Replacement. Replacement? <laughs> Replacement. <laughs> I'll keep it for you, Captain Peacock. Good heavens. Good lord. It's not that bad, is it, Captain Peacock? It's worse. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Why, what does it say? <laughs> I can hear his knees creaking along the carpet. <laughs> We're all to be replaced en masse. Oh, huh? That's why we've been summoned to the boardroom. Typical. Typical. Well, miserable old devil. My horoscope said I was going to get a new position. <laughs> but I interpreted it quite differently. I have never been sacked. All the years I've worked in shops. I think we should all resign before we are dismissed. Yeah. I, I don't think we should do anything hasty. Water. Weak as water. That's what you are. I agree with you, Mr. Granger. And I am unanimous in that. <laughs> Hands up all those who think we should resign. Good. We resign. And we do it in alphabetical order. <laughs> Brahms. Men first. Granger. A very good morning to you all. Well, what's the matter? Cat got your tongues? <laughs> Before you say anything, Mr Grace, uh, Mr Granger has a statement to make. Has he? Well, what is it then? Good morning, Mr Grace. <laughs> I'm afraid I must resign. Oh, well, uh, Ernest, I, I suppose it had to come sooner or later. Um, make a note of that, Rumbold, and uh, then tell them what I have in mind. <coughs> uh, Mr Grace has decided, in his wisdom, that it would be a good idea if we all obtained experience of other people's departments. Uh, to that end, it has been decided that haberdashery and notions uh, should go to bathroom fittings and sanitary wear, stationery should go to bedding, and uh, the ladies and gentlemen of our floor are going to toys. So we're not going to get the sack after all? No, on the contrary. Uh, you could be promoted to the position recently left vacant by Mr Granger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should say he was the obvious candidate, sir. Oh, well, Ross, make a note of that, Miss Fakebell. Uh, 
Congratulations. Uh, it will also leave a vacancy in Mr. Humphrey's position, sir. Oh. Uh, may I apply for that, sir? Uh, could Mr. Lucas step into your shoes, Mr. Humphreys? Oh, yes, he's shown a lot of promise. <laughs> and I do believe in giving young men an opportunity. <laughs> well, uh, make a note of that, too. Yes, I, I was under some misapprehension. I should like to withdraw my notice. It's gone down in the minutes, hasn't it, Miss Bakewell? Yes, Mr. Rumbold. I'm afraid once it's down in the minutes, the resignation will have to stand. Surely we don't have to be that hard on you, Mr. Rumbold. Couldn't he reapply? <laughs> I suppose so. Do you want to do that? Oh, yes, I do. Wants to reapply, sir. Oh, well. Um, have you any vacancies? <laughs> <laughs> Young Mr. Lucas's job is going. He's a bit old for that, isn't he? <laughs> I think we should give him a chance, sir. After all, he has had a lot of experience. Well, well very well. Give him the job. Welcome to Grace Brothers, young man. <laughs> Well done, Mr. Granger. And if you work really hard, maybe in 20 or 30 years, you'll be earning what you were five minutes ago. <laughs> I should watch it, though. We debag the juniors on their first day. <laughs> Very well, that's settled. We'll see you all in toys first thing on Monday morning. Oh, uh, don't be late, Mr. Granger. We don't want a black mark on your first day as a junior, you know. <laughs> Rob, just look at that big bear. Oh, well, do that there. <laughs> Morning, ladies. Welcome to the toilet. <laughs> the fairy time book is over there if you care to sign it. Just a minute, Mr. Granger. Junior signed last. <laughs> Don't worry, Captain Peacock's going to have a word with Mr. Rumbold about your reinstatement. Yes, providing your superiors give you a good report. <laughs> Where is old Peacock, anyway? He's here, and I warn you, he's in a bad mood. They dragged him out on Sunday morning so he could learn all about the goods. Oh, how ridiculous. What is there to learn about toys? All you do is bounce them, cuddle them, or turn them on. Just like girls, really. <laughs> you get sexy to everything, don't mm. you? Give it a chance. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning. morning. Oh, here. Anybody fancy a little early morning cocoa? <laughs> get off the floor, Mr. Harmon. Uh, Captain Peacock, now that you're in toys, you have to learn to develop a sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> here who's going to sell what well uh, I think it would be best if I acquaint you with the general range of products and then we can allot responsibility later <laughs> I, dislike children. I always dislike children I dislike children even when I was a child well, you played with toys didn't you well I remember that I used to make soldiers out of plasticine and fill them with tomato sauce whatever for so that I could shoot them down with my air pistol and it made my sister sick. <laughs> now, this area here... Look, if this is going to be a long do, I want to spend a penny. <laughs> I'll be as brief as possible, Mrs. Slocum. Now, this area here is devoted to the two to five-year-olds. For instance, we have a lot of this sort of thing. Oh, well, what does that do? <laughs> <laughs> Is that all? I understand it's very exciting when you're two. <laughs> Japanese rubbish. A lot of men in back rooms inventing that. I'm sure they do other things as well. <laughs> yes, well now, uh, this is a special offer. The Wibbly Wobbly Playground. <laughs> now, we get the uh, Wibbly Slide and the Wibbly Roundabout and the Wibbly Rocker and, of course, the Wibbly Swing. And with them, four Wibbly Wobblies. <laughs> Extra Wibbly Wobblies are obtainable at 25 pence per Wibbly Wobbly. <laughs> now, to demonstrate it, one is recommended to adopt the following procedure. <laughs> Down the Wobbly Slide Round the wobbly roundabout, <laughs> up and down on the wobbly rocker. You have to have two or they won't wobble. <laughs> you 
you should know. <laughs> After that, we come to the grand finale. Oh, stop it. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> excitement's killing me. Don't tell me that they're going to have a wobbly swing. <laughs> exactly. There you are. Right. <laughs> How much is that? Three seventy-five. Now then, let's see if you've all been paying attention. Mr. Humphreys, would you care to demonstrate? Let's imagine that a small boy between two and five has just arrived at the counter. Now, it's all up to you. Hello, little two-year-old boy. <laughs> Are you interested in Wibbly Wobblies? <laughs> Are you? In that case, you must be five. <laughs> Charlie Wibbly Wobbly and his friend Roger. <laughs> now, what do they do? They go down the little chute, onto the Wibbly Wobbly roundabout, onto the Wibbly Wobbly rocker. Oh dear, that's upset Roger. <laughs> it's giving him a Wibbly Wobbly tummy. But he doesn't want to disappoint Charlie, does he? So they both have a swing on the Wibbly Wobbly swings and then sit down together and discuss how nice it is living in Wibbly Wobbly land. <laughs> Little do they know that Spetser the Spider. That's his and he has crept up behind him and gobbled him up for lunch. <laughs> That's horrible. Lucas, we do not want to frighten the children. But there is no need to worry, because Spencer the Spider doesn't really like the taste of Roger, so he spits him out. <laughs> After for 375. <laughs> Which is not bad these days. Well, now, I, I think you've you've all got a fair idea about that. Now, um, over here we have the usual games. Uh, they're all fairly straightforward. And uh, in this area, we have the mechanical toys. Now, uh, this is very popular with children of three and under. Why not one to three? We prefer to call them three and under. That so it includes those at naught. <laughs> This is called Tuffy Tank, and as you can see, it stops at nothing. <laughs> oh, for sake. I'll bet Roger Wibbly Wobbly would like a ride in a Tuffy Tank. What is it, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> for the more sophisticated children, uh, that is from five and upwards, we have a very interesting range of robots. Now, uh, firstly, we have the television robot. Oh, oh look! It's Star Trek. I bet it's a repeat. <laughs> and we have this one. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't like television. <laughs> Look, they're stuck together. What will we do? Like a bucket of cold water. They <laughs> send in Tuffy the tank. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the United Nations. <laughs> It is rather exciting, isn't it? <laughs> yes, well, uh, and now over here, follow me over here, will you? In this area, here, we have the mechanical cuddlies. But they're all dogs. Is there no demand for mechanical pussies? <laughs> <laughs> told that people prefer the real thing. <laughs> now, to demonstrate, these do almost everything that real dogs do. This here, this is Daisy the Dachshund. It walks and it barks. There you are, Mr. Humphreys. Yeah, thank you. Come along, Daisy. Time for walkies. <laughs> now then, here is Daisy's <coughs> friend, Billy the Bassett. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got the general idea. The general idea. Now over here we have the uh, we have the various dolls, which are of course for the girls. Not always. <laughs> this is a very popular range. Annie, the air hostess. Now she has a twistable tummy, bendable legs, 
And you can undress her. I used to live next door to an air hostess just like that. <laughs> Captain Peacock. <laughs> Will you tell Mr. Lucas to stop looking up her skirt? I'm just checking to see if she's got any knickers on. <laughs> Put that down, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> I think it would be more appropriate if the ladies were to deal with the dolls and cuddlies. Now then, here we have Playgirl Penny and her boyfriend, Fun Time Freddy. Is he easily bent? <laughs> the Fun Time Freddy comes complete with a shower unit. Now, he's made of waterproof plastic. All you have to do is remove his hat, remove his sweater, then you pull down his trousers, <laughs> take them off like this, quite easy. Then you trap his neck in this device here <laughs> so that he can't move. You know, I used to live next door to somebody that had a shower just like that. <laughs> By pressing this button, you give him a shower. Oh, what will they think of next? Does he always keep his boots on when he's taking a shower? <laughs> don't call him Fun Time Freddy for nothing. <laughs> Over here, we have what is called mm. Hocus Pocus. Oh. Now, this consists of such things as uh, itching powder, imitation ink blots, stink bombs. Oh, I had them. I used to let them off in the choir. <laughs> <laughs> they called me Stinky Granger. <laughs> no wonder you've been a junior for so long. <laughs> We're also offering this rather interesting little novelty. Uh, Mrs. Slocum, have you got a penny? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Now then, watch this closely. as I thought. Made in Scotland. <laughs> what about my money? Well, you said you wanted to spend a penny. You just had <laughs> Over here, we find the more complicated dolls. Now, these actually talk. Now, this type retails at £12.50 and is made in England. Now, here we are. Well, watch this. My name is Betty, and I want to go to the potty. <laughs> And uh, that one that you're holding, Mrs. Locum, it retails at £6.50 and is made in India. My name is Yasmin, and I have just been to the party. <laughs> yes, Mr. Grace? How's it going, Rambo? <laughs> well, sir, they've only been at it for half an hour. Yes, but bathroom fittings are doing very well in trousers. <laughs> Good. Well, there are one or two customers about now, sir, so I should think that by lunchtime we should be able to foreguess the general spectrum of viability. Yes, I've no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in touch. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, uh, and about Granger, sir. Granger? Yes, sir, he's now the junior. Oh, Granger the junior? Oh, he's just come to us from Derry and Tom's, hasn't he? <laughs> That was in 1926, sir. 26? He's a bit old for a junior, isn't he? <laughs> Mr. Granger is over 70, sir. Over 70 and still a junior? <laughs> well, he'd better pull his socks up, or he'd have to go. Buggler's <laughs> <laughs> well. Is Peacock there? I'm afraid you've come through to Gnome Land. <laughs> Captain Peacock is just showing a prospective tenant around the Windy House. <laughs> Tell him to come to my office. Rumbold wants you. Can you take over from me? I'm afraid not, Captain Peacock. I'm right in the middle of demonstrating the magic mushroom tree. <laughs> I'll take over. <laughs> Enter. Ah, Peacock. I just wanted you to know that I'm doing my best to get Granger reinstated. But I'm having trouble getting through to Mr. Grace. Why, is his telephone out of order? No, his brain. <laughs> By the way, while you're here, I'd like your opinion. What do you think of this? <laughs> 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 
streetwear? <laughs> it's a whimsical novelty, Peacock. <laughs> Very whimsical. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, because you'll be wearing it and demonstrating it round the... <laughs> I don't wish to make an issue out of this, sir, but if you insist, I shall be forced to go over your head and appeal direct to Mr. Grace. It would be very unwise of you, Peacock, to question my decision. Nevertheless, sir, that is what I intend to do. Well, be it on your own head. It's my intention to prevent that. Come in. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um... I want a table in the alcove. I'm expecting a young lady, so if she gets there before I do, give her a drink. She's a tall, blue-eyed blonde, about 65. <laughs> well, I, I can't... I, I must go now. I don't, I've, got, I've got a man here with a propeller on his head. <laughs> Mr Chris, I appeal to you. What do you think about your floor walkers wearing these? Well, what does it do? <laughs> yes, well, uh, if you uh, want to get off the ground, you'll have to get a bigger propeller. <laughs> Mr. Rumbold, will you do something about Mr. Lucas? He keeps filling my tinkling dollies with fizzy lemonade. <laughs> And every time I do the putty demonstration, they get all covered in froth. <laughs> and there's another thing. Mr. Humphreys keeps coming over and putting Funtime Freddy in the shower. <laughs> I want it clearly understood in front of witnesses that I am responsible for bathing Funtime Freddy. <laughs> I had just stimulated a customer's interest in Funtime Freddy. I was carrying through the demonstration to complete the sale. I mean, we must have scope. If she wants to come over and give my wibbly wobblies a swing, would I create? <laughs> I have no interest whatsoever in your wibbly wobblies. <laughs> I want a rule that we all stick to our own counters. Well, in that case, stop Miss Brown from overwinding my vibrating bear. <laughs> can't keep her hands off it. Well, what about him? He keeps crawling under my counter. Can I help it if my robots get out of control? <laughs> conversation with that man. Did he give you permission to take it off? No. The last suggestion was that I should put a bigger motor in it and save bus fares. <laughs> uh, sorry to interrupt. I've got a bit of bad news. We've had a bit of a tragedy with Billy the Bassett. He got a bit too cheeky with Bertie the Bulldog. We don't sell Bertie the Bulldog. No, I know. It belonged to a customer. <laughs> and as a result of the fracas, this is what happened. <laughs> He's pleased to see his head again. <laughs> by the way, am I covered by insurance against personal injury from ferocious pets? Well, I expect so. Oh, good. Well, I'll go and fill in the necessary forms then. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all right, don't you, Mr. Lucas? A perfect fit, Mr. Humphreys. Mm. Would Sir mind raising his tomahawk? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of room under the arms. Well, the trousers are a bit long. Indians are wearing them long this year. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, the seat is a bit baggy. Yeah, well, you need them baggy, sir, you see, for squatting round the totem pole. <laughs> it also comes with this simulated buffalo hide trophy belt. The hooks are for the scalps. Yes. Would Sir be requiring scalps? Well, I... Uh, scalps, Mr. Lucas? Scalps coming up, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> there we are, sir. That's the very latest range in scalps. We call this the Magnificent Seven Rain. That one hasn't got any hair. That's your brinner, sir. <laughs> I'd like to buy a bridal doll for my little girl. Certainly, madam. Brides, Miss Brahms. Uh, will it be a registry office or a church wedding? <laughs> church, I think. Oh, you're so wise, madam. <laughs> it's so much more romantic, isn't it? And now, this one retails at £20.50. Oh, it's a lot, isn't it? Oh, well, it comes complete with bridegroom. <laughs> and the full trousseau. And if you pull this cord, it talks. I love you. I love you. I do. I do. 
Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> oh, can't you just picture the scene? There she stands by the bridegroom. They're stood in front of the altar. The organ's playing. The ceremony comes to a climax. She turns to him and utters those immortal words that he'll remember forever. I want to go to the body. <laughs> Points are set. Good, yes. Now check the signals. Right. Oh, clear. So, uh, we're off. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Granger has sold four of those already, sir. I thought he didn't like children. He doesn't, but he likes trains. <laughs> I do hope we can do something about his reinstatement. Oh, yes, that was all very unfortunate, but leave it to me. I'll fix it with Mr. Grayson. Well, the sales figures are very good, Rambold. Oh, yes, sir. I think the whole staff have found it very stimulating. <laughs> Mind you, they'll be glad to get back to their own departments. Yes, of course. Well, well it's nearly closing time. I'll, uh, I'll come down and thank them personally. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, well, uh, it's about Granger, sir. He didn't really intend to resign. Well, I know that. I was just teaching him a lesson. <laughs> Nobody you know is indispensable. Except her, perhaps, and she goes on playing her card. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got time for one more race before the shop closes. All right, Mrs. Slocum's on blue, Miss Brown's on red, and Mr. Humphreys is on virgin white. Oh, yeah. Last race, then, <laughs> 50p a knob, okay. winner take all. Right, they're on the starter's <laughs> orders, and they're off! Oh, 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 pursued, which hasn't happened for years. <laughs> and, hello, Mr. Humphreys is a little behind. <laughs> not always a disadvantage. I've <laughs> <laughs> oh, won, I've won. Oh, trust him to get it, isn't it? No. Isn't it amazing what you see when you have Good evening, your... everybody. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Mr. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad to see you've all entered into the spirit of the thing, especially as the bell went two minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> oh we must have missed it in the excitement. Yes, well, thank you all very much indeed. You've all done very well. Thank you, Mr. Grace. Right then, pack up. We don't want to get locked in all night. Oh, I wouldn't mind. Hey, I haven't had a go on the racing cars yet. <laughs> night, night, little wibbly wobbly. <laughs> I'm going to miss you. <laughs> night, night, little tree people. I'm going to bed, boys. Up you go in your lift. And Rover, no barking and keeping everybody away. <laughs> Taking that one home with you, Mrs. Slocum? Uh, well, I have paid for it. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> it's just that I've become rather attached to it. <laughs> Shall I tell Granger, sir? Oh, yes, yes. Put him out of his misery. The Birmingham Intercity Special is just leaving from Platform 2. Uh, Mr. Granger? Uh, no, now, not now, Mr. Rumpole. I'm expecting a, I'm expecting a good train at any moment. I've, I've got good news for you. As from Monday morning, you will once again be the senior assistant in menswear. Oh, I see. Well, aren't you pleased? Well, I was rather thinking of applying for another job. I take it you're not resigning again? Uh, no, but I was hoping I could stay on as a junior in the toy department, then I could go on playing with my trains. <laughs> <laughs> no good, Granger. You've got to grow up sometime. Still, we could have half an hour now. Tell him to keep the store open. 